The video will start in a few seconds, but as a reminder, remember, if you have a question, comment, or suggestion about this video, please follow the link below. Also note that you can post anonymously. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds for 3dgameman.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Silverstone Strider Plus 600 watt power supply. This is the SST ST60F PS power supply. I will also be taking a look at their sleeved cables. First, let's have a quick look at the box. Lots of pictures of the product on it, as well as plenty of features and specifications about it. And let me open it up and see what's inside. There's a product manual, as well as a specifications manual. Cable ties, a Velcro tie down. You've got lots of screws here for mounting it in the case four regular black screws and four black thumb screws power cord modular leads and the power supply which is in a bubble wrap bag and they also have this protective plastic here on their logo. Now let's have a closer look at this power supply. The Strider Plus series of power supplies range in wattages from 500 all the way up to 1500, so you're sure to find a power supply for the job. Now I will be reviewing the 600 PS model today. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand this, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use, and there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 130 watts, and the 12 volt is 588 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt rail and the plus 5 volt rail are both 20 amps each and it has a single plus 12 volt rail and that's 49 amps. Now there are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now generally speaking a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply for a hardcore system. Select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If however you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. Now this power supply's efficiency is between 85 to 88% at 20 to 100% loading. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or active power factor correction, assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. Now, this power supply is actually stamped 80 Plus Silver certified. However, it's actually received the 80 Plus Gold certification, but it was borderline, so they are selling it as an 80 Plus Silver unit just to guarantee it meets requirements. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors because this ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside of the case. It's also important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty. This power supply comes with a black lead-free paint finish and the housing is steel. They include a quiet 120 millimeter fan which provides ample airflow 
Also, there's lots of ventilation holes, so this power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. And here's the power switch and the power cord connection. If you're thinking that this is a very teeny tiny power supply, well, you are right. And as a matter of fact, it is the smallest ATX power supply to be 100% modular. That's something that a lot of so-called modular power supplies can't say because while they call them modular, they usually have a couple leads hardwired into the power supply. Modular leads are fantastic because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup and this reduces the cable mess and thus increases airflow inside of the case. I have to say that I really like modular power supplies. I think once you go modular, you're not going to go back. And the reason is you only need to use the leads required for your particular setup. This will reduce the cable mess and thus increase airflow inside the case. Now just have a look at the sleeving job on these stock modular cables. Very, very nice indeed. However, Silverstone does have other cables that you can choose from if you want to. And now let me have a look at these. Now right off the top here, what makes these cables unique is that they work with all Silverstone modular power supplies. That is power supplies released after 2009 and they sell them separately. Now this is important because other companies offer individual sleeve cables too, but sometimes they are incompatible with each other and they come in one pack, which would cost more. So it makes more sense to buy what you need. Now there is quite a variety of these premium power supply cables. You can get serial ATA, also slim serial ATA. You got the option of motherboard leads, the four plus four, as well as the 24 pin. You've got the video card leads, the six plus two, as well as the peripheral four pin, which is the Molex and floppy cable. I love how easy it is to open these packs. Just rip it from either side and take it right out. Now this is the 2024 pin motherboard cable, but all the other cables have the same fantastic sleeving job done. Just have a closer look at the sleeving and the way that they've tucked all the cables right into the plugs. Outstanding. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. If I have one piece of advice, it would be never cheap out on a power supply. Always go with a power supply company that you can trust. Normally a brand name company like Silverstone. I think this particular model though is going to sell very well for Silverstone because it's affordable, comes with a quiet fan. It is also 100% modular and it is super compact. This would be a perfect power supply for a small build. Now, while this is not a high wattage power supply, remember the Strider Plus series of power supplies, you know, it's a huge range. Uh, you can go all the way up to 1500 watts. So you can get the power supply that you want. Also with this power supply, it isn't officially stamped gold certified, it's silver certified, but it's borderline between silver and gold. So you know what, if you're looking for a gold power supply, but you don't want to spend that extra few dollars for the stamp that says gold, well, you might want to go with this one. Overall though, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video review and please note that pricing for this product is available on the 3D Game Man video review page.